Hey everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and this video is going to show the fastest fully upgraded vehicles in the GTA Online off-road class in terms of top speed. As always, the position counter is in the top left with the actual top speed the vehicle achieved in the top right, and for this 2020 series I'll be showcasing the non-raceable vehicles first. So even though for example the Brutus is in the off-road vehicles class and has the highest top speed overall, since it can't be used in regular off-road vehicle races, it's not going to be included in the main list. We start the regular raceable vehicles list with the Dune Loader in 31st place overall. This video only focuses on straight line performance, so if you're interested in racing where braking, cornering and acceleration are all relevant, check the link in the description for the lap time testing series, and if you want to know more information about this testing including the extent to which it's accurate and how useful it is for you personally, have a read of the full description as everything that you need is in there. This video lists all vehicles and is correct as of the Casino Heist update. For any off-road vehicles added after that or other classes of cars, check the playlist linked in the second line of the description and feel free to check out my Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want to support this work and get testing results of any new cars a little bit early. So as we go through some of the non-raceable vehicles first, obviously there's 18 non-raceable vehicles in the off-road vehicles class, it's just a big mess really. As we saw from the lap time testing video last week, the, I explained in that video the reasons that I don't test these vehicles in an off-road situation. So if you want more information about why I don't and why I try to keep it consistent across the board, go and watch the lap time testing video for the off-road class if you haven't seen it already. Now, when it comes to the non-raceable vehicles, they're all fairly standard. Obviously, we saw the Jabba very early on, only just a little bit quicker in terms of top speed than the uh, RC Bandito. And then with all these kind of vehicles, the technical customs, the Night Shark, things like that, they're all a pretty standard around 100 mile per hour top speed. And that's pretty normal for quite a lot of vehicles in the game. You know, when you're looking at sort of a lot of supercars, sedans, all these kind of normal vehicles that you would consider seeing around in traffic, for example, that's a kind of regular top speed. It's only when we get to the top few for the non-raceable vehicles class, like here with the Bruiser, that we start to see some increased top speeds. And when it comes to the Arena War vehicles, they're obviously only getting that top speed because of the fact that they can get a Nitrous Boost upgrade that gives them a higher average speed. So just to explain how that works, when, it, when there are vehicles with a boost, like with the Vigilante and the Scramjet or the Rocket Voltic and the Supers class, for example, if they have the ability to boost, then I do use that boost upgrade, as you're seeing with these vehicles, with the Brutus, 123.5 miles per hour there for, is the quickest for non-raceable vehicles, and that is would actually be the quickest in the class overall. It's very quick top speed, really. Um, but when it comes to uh, the, the using the boost, I'm, I'm timing between two checkpoints to get these lap to get these top speeds accurately. So essentially, the, the the vehicles may boost to say 130 miles per hour for a split second, and then immediately drop back down to 115. And what I'm measuring is the the top speed that they'll be going over a longer distance. So their effective top speed over a long distance when you're using the boost as effectively as you can. Now obviously we're into the regular raceable vehicles list. We had the two uh, big monster trucks first, which don't have that great of a top speed, but they, they mainly accelerate pretty well. Um, and then we've got the lifeguard blazer that you saw, which is a little bit quicker than it used to be because it can now be upgraded ever since the Casino Heist DLC. And it, as with all the blazers, it is quicker, you'll get a higher top speed by leaning forward on them than just doing nothing else. Kind of like a bike, but obviously with bikes, it's quicker to get the front wheel up and wheelie with them, as we'll see towards the end of the video, because as always with the off-road vehicles class, it's not even vehicles that are in the off-road class that dominate the class in the first place for lap time or top speed. But we're still not even to 100 miles per hour yet for these uh, off-road vehicles. We've got the Hot Rod Blazer, which is exactly the same as the regular Blazer for top speed in 22nd place. Uh, also to point out that when vehicles share the exact same top speed, the the vehicle that has the better lap time is the one that's given the higher place. So that's the, the distinguishing feature between those. So if you're seeing, you know, two vehicles with the same top speed, like here with the Sand King XL, 
has the same top speed as the Sand King short wheel base version as well but the, the SWB gets that 19th position because it has a better lap time than what the XL does. But the top speeds are exactly the same. Now there are other vehicles that can be used in off-road vehicle races. For example there's the Dune which is in the services class, service vehicles class technically but you can use it for off-road vehicle races stock. There's the baller, the old style baller which is obviously in the SUVs class. There's quite a few and if I was to add them all into this video we'd be here all day. So for these videos, these testing videos for the 2020 off-road lap time and top speed videos, I'm just focusing on the, the off-road vehicles class. Every vehicle that's technically properly in the off-road vehicles class, even though there's some that can be used in off-road vehicle races as well, I'm not including them because those vehicles have been tested and they're in the videos for the specific class. For your example, if you go to the playlist, and you look for the service vehicles lap time and top speed videos you'll find the Dune and the the only ones that I'm focusing on that aren't in the off-road vehicles class that can be used in races are ones that actually make a difference for races the Dune would be nowhere in the off-road class for races it's not relevant you're not going to use a Dune if you're going up against some of the top vehicles whereas the two bikes that we'll see at the end of the video they are technically in the motorcycles class but they can be used in off-road vehicle races and because of their lap time and top speed being competitive that's why I'm including them in these videos. Alright so we're, we're getting closer to the top 10 at this point but we've still only just broken the 100 mile per hour barrier if you've been keeping an eye on the, the top speeds it's actually very very close up until we get to the Dubster 6x6 really which is in 12th place. Uh, we, we had a lot of vehicles that were in the high 90s low 100 mile per hour range and then as soon as we get to like I said the Dubster 6x6 in 10th place and then 11th place here with the Caracara 4x4 we're going to start to see the top speeds ramp up a decent amount uh, obviously 103 miles per hour for those two vehicles and then we've got the Hellion here sneaks into the top 10 position in 10th place with 103.5 only slightly quicker but we've still got a long way to go in this list in terms of top speeds. The off-roads class, over the years, it, it hasn't really been a, a class that's had good top speed vehicles in it. And I guess that's just the nature of the vehicles that we have here. They're kind of, they're big, bulky vehicles. They're not meant for, you know, blasting down a highway at high speeds like a supercar. But as the DLCs have come and, and things have progressed, some of the top vehicles now do have fairly respectable top speeds in the off-road class but some that you know are quite good for lap time generally get that kind of lap time mainly through acceleration even even those aren't that great for top speed so as we can see here with the injection in eighth place 106.5 we're not even you know at the the very bottom of what the the sort of sports class and and supers class would offer it, if you if you take into account all vehicles in GTA, these off-road vehicles that we're seeing now, even though they're getting towards the top of their class, like the Everon here in seventh place, they would probably be about average, right about the middle. You know, the 200 or 300 in the list out of the 500 vehicles that I've tested. So sixth place is the Desert Raid with 106.5 miles per hour, and then in fifth place, just into the top five. We've got the Trophy Truck as well, just a little bit quicker than the Desert Raid for top speed. But again, like I said in the lap time t testing video, you're generally going to get the same sort of experience, whether you have a Trophy Truck or a Desert Raid. They're, they're pretty much the same vehicle underneath, so you can choose either one. And the, even th this is kind of what I was talking about. These two vehicles in particular are where we see acceleration play a much more important role for their, their lap time. Their top speeds are okay, but they're generally going to do better in a racing situation because they've got really, really good acceleration. Now in fourth place, we've got the Bifter. Really good for the Bifter, you know, an old vehicle still in the top five for top speed for the off-roads class. 107.3 miles per hour is pretty respectable. Yeah, it would be at the bottom of the sports class or the supers class or, you know, even, even things like sports classics and muscles. But for the off-roads vehicles class, that's a pretty respectable top speed. But now we're going to see it ramp up fairly significantly. 
So as we come into the top three, in third place is the Camacho. This has a top speed of 116.8 miles per hour, so almost 10 miles per hour quicker than what we just saw from the Bifta. And this kind of, when the Camacho was released, this kind of solidified how good it was. You know, it was significantly better than the, the Trophy Truck and the Desert Raid, which used to be the quickest in the class for lap time in terms of top speed and it beat them by lap time as well. We got the Brawler in second place, which 117.8 miles per hour. The Brawler was, has, has always been very good for top speed in the off-road vehicles class, but the lack of cornering ability and braking ability specifically is always what hindered it in a racing situation in terms of lap time, but it's still right up there for top speed and really uh, respectable. And that's why the Camacho was so good because it had a top speed that was, you know, close to what the brawler can do, whilst also having good cornering ability. But ultimately, the number one vehicle for the off-road vehicles class in terms of top speed is the new Vagrant. With a top speed of 122.3 miles per hour, it beats everything that's come before it. At this point, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already for regular lap time and top speed testing videos and updates when new cars are released, and check out other classes in the playlist. But the Vagrant... It, it's it's only been a, a recent addition to the game and it demolishes everything in the off-road class for lap time and for top speed. Whether you want to use it in an off-road situation, it might not be quite as stable or as consistent as a Camacho, but ultimately when it comes to off-road vehicle races, you don't want to use either of them anyway. Obviously I've included the Sanchez here which has a top speed of 119.5, so before the Vagrant came along, even the Sanchez was quicker than every other off-road vehicle when you, you know, got the front wheel up and wheelied with it. But really the one vehicle that you want to be using for off-road vehicle races, as always, is the BF400. Not only is it the best for lap time, it has a top speed that is in the top five for the motorcycles class as a whole, with a top speed of 137.0 miles per hour. That's, t that's 15 miles per hour quicker than the Vagrant. And that is huge. Obviously, it's all because motorcycles can wheelie and get crazy top speeds with the wheelie, and the BF400 is one of the best vehicles that can wheelie. And when you see the comparison, obviously, between the BF400 and the Vagrant, as we see on the screen, it just it just leaves it for dead. And this is the problem with having the BF400 and the Sanchez in the off-road vehicles class. They're not off-road vehicles, they're motorcycles. They're not technically in the off-road vehicles class, but they can be used in off-road vehicle races, and they're just so much quicker than everything else, especially in the case of the BF400. Only now, with the Vagrant being released, do we finally have something that would have been able to compete with the Sanchez if the BF400 hadn't also been allowed to be used in the off-road vehicles class. And, you know, we've got other vehicles like the Manchez and other various dirt bikes that can't be used in the off-road vehicles class. So it's a total mess. You know the score by now. Just wanted to point out one last thing. The Vagrant costs $2.2 million, the BF400 costs $95,000. So if you're, if you're choosing which one to use, definitely go for the BF400. But for this video, that's pretty much it. Consider supporting on Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want to get testing results early. And remember to read the description for more info, comment with your thoughts, like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful, and subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.